today. Good. So today our conversation is going to be about weaning okay. and we're going to be talking about the three weaning mistakes that most uh, moms uh, make. Okay. Uh, we make them let know culturally we're used to them. We make them because a lot of people still say them. But okay. it's really important to correct them, especially in our region, because okay. in our region we tend to to, okay. to, to get our information. So we're rich. talking about solid weaning, and I yes. think it's important for people to know what's weaning because sometimes people don't even know what that is. You're so right. So we and weaning. Right. Some days there's people who understand weaning. Hasab, if you're like looking at a British system or an American system, sometimes people think weaning is stopping milk completely. Okay. Some people believe that weaning is uh, just stopping breastfeeding. Today we're going to be talking about the three most common weaning two solid food okay. mistakes that we okay. tend to make. And you're, that you're, you're coming <laughs> on to a, a solid period. <laughs> so I'm sure you, know, you have uh, a lot of questions yeah, about do. that. I do. Um, so to go ahead. Do you want to start with some questions before we dig into the three? Uh, eh? Mm. So what would be, first of all, the ideal age to start uh, weanings on solids? Perfect. So the ideal age is actually an extremely common question. Mm -hmm. And usually, according to the WHO, which is the World Health Organization and the American Academy mm -hmm. of Pediatrics and the NHS and the UK, and the Australian associations, they say that we should start solids at six months. Okay. The recommendation is exclusive breastfeeding until six months, but then you introduce complementary food. Okay. So you introduce solids and let's say you're breastfeeding you can continue until age two. Well, if you're giving formula, it comes along with the formula. Okay. So this is a general recommendation. Some doctors and associations are recommending starting at four months. Okay. Still, there is no official recommendation to start at four months. Okay. This does not exist. A lot of people think it exists. It does not exist. Okay. Uh, but some doctors will say that. What we know for sure, 100%, and no, you should absolutely not start before four months. Oh, for sure. That's when we were small, and we had to eat and eat and chocolate and all that. Well, they can cause a lot of allergies. Okay. So it's very important before the four months, don't do it. We better sure don't allergies on four months, more or less. Absolutely, and there are things that happen Tamara during the weaning period that impact the child for life. Mm -hmm. we think that it only impacts them short term, but. Between the, the, the mom's pregnancy, which is the first day in pregnancy, and mm -hmm. until the baby's two, we call them the first thousand days of life. And okay. these are the foundational days in a child. Okay. You set up the foundation for their immunity, for their allergies, for their risk of diabetes, obesity, everything. Okay. So even if you don't see a problem then, you can see it later, later on. on. Because if you're giving a child solids before they're ready, what's gonna happen is, let's say you give them a strawberry and their body's not ready to have strawberries it before four months. It. it will reject it and it will reject it and believe that it has an okay. allergy to it. Okay. So in terms of that first question, which is an excellent question, my personal recommendation is to go with the official recommendations of six months. Okay. Best shahl is real. Some people be all eh, no, you can start at four months. Hala, the pediatrician, when she says that, it would be based on. Lan ma baif zaida shi sahih. Mazboot la anno he can sit upright. Is this the reason they be all ah you can start before? Walla ma khas. It's very important to have all the signs that a child is ready, which is sitting upright, which is, you know, kids, tamayra naturally, mm -hmm. when they're ready to eat, they will accept the food. Mazbut. There's a reflex that most babies have, and they have it as a protection mechanism, mm -hmm. where if you give them food, it's called the tongue thrust. So what they do is they spit it out, right? Mm -hmm. So we need the babies to lose that tongue thrust reflex okay. for us to know they're ready. And okay. if they're spitting it out and you're forcing it onto them, it means they're not ready. ready. Okay. And also you want to see that they have a kind of ability to grab food and put them. Okay. Most people misunderstand and they think as soon as they see one of these signs, it means they're ready. Okay. It's not necessarily ready. The biggest sign in the world is uh, they're interested in food. Mm. My babies are interested in everything. In everything, you know. <laughs> okay. So that is a, quite a common thing okay. that um, okay. that happens, which I think leads us to to then the three common issues okay. uh, that they have. One more quick question Ten. before you say what are the mistakes? Because بلاي إنه هيدا الشيء مهم. كمان كتير ناس بيقولوا بلشوا بالخضرة وبعدين السويت لأنه الخضرة مش طيب مثل السويت. Is this something correct? So to answer you honestly, there aren't research that will confirm that no, starting with vegetables is better. Okay. There isn't. But for me, as someone who, who works in this field, mm -hmm. I do find that it is better to start with My vegetables. vegetables because. At the end of the day, it's very easy to like fruits because they're mm -hmm. very sweet. Mm -hmm. But getting them to like vegetables, vegetables are one of the hardest things to like. 
because they don't have the same sweetness mm -hmm. and they don't have the same caloric density. Masbut. So, but vegetables are for me even more important than fruits because yes, vegetables it. tend to have a lot of the vitamins and minerals that we don't find in fruits. So, and fruits, okay, if you a lot Achille, but, uh, vitamin C, uh, antioxidants, and all of these things. But fruits at the end are going to be snacks. Yeah. Two snacks a day, Masbut. right? Because vegetables, we need them to be in every meal. So for me, I definitely would say start with, the vegetables. Start with vegetables. I always say, have make sure that they're eating a proper breakfast, lunch, and dinner before you introduce fruits as snacks. Versus what we do, okay. which is breakfast is a fruit, dinner is a fruit, yeah, lunch yeah. is a yeah. uh, lunch. Okay. We don't have the same sweet potato, carrots, whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Versus. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Okay. Um, so, and which brings us to to a misconception that people tend mm -hmm. to have that they think that whenever we offer food for babies, it should be bland. So if I'm giving vegetables, you're gonna tell me, you know, I'm not gonna give him or or my baby spinach or okra or bazalla mm -hmm. or peas or all mm -hmm. of these things because you know they're not gonna like them. Okay. But the idea is not that you steam them and then you give it to them okay. you know that's not the idea the idea is that you give them in a way that you they would eat it naturally okay. so for example yes maybe in the beginning we might give it for three days that's just asparagus let's say mm -hmm. that's steamed and then you mush it and you give it but as soon as we know they don't have an allergy to it we can add herbs we can add garlic we can add ginger okay. we can add uh, uh spices that are mild for the baby we just can to add give it some olive flavor. oil yes because okay. if you want to give peas you want to give peas not on their own you want to give it eventually like how we eat it in a piece mm -hmm. form, mm -hmm. we want to give it along with other things so we shouldn't really be giving them bland foods and a lot of people think that كل شيء حامي على معدته انه بصل نو انيونز ليتس افويد ذم جارليك لا ليتس افويد انيونز از اوكي رايت لانه كمان هيدا اي ثينك اتس ا مسكسبشن هيدا والجارليك كمان اكزاكتلي يو ار ابسولوتلي رايت مش كثير مش انه والله عم بياكل يخلط بصل بس انه هيك شوي فور فليفر يعني اكزاكتلي وات ذي ثينك از ات ويل كوز بلوتينج اند ذير فور اي شود افويد ات بت وات ات ذا اند اوف ذا داي تمارا دو هيلثي ثينكس كوز بلوتينج No, I mean, yani, no. most of them I'm don't. But for example, let's say you want to eat uh, lentils, mm -hmm. adas. Adas. Yes, yeah, man, yeah. But it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Let's say you want to eat khibz asmar, whole grain bread. Yeah, but it's healthy. We are not different when we eat healthy things because they contain fibers, and okay. fibers are the food for the healthy bacteria in our gut. Okay. So our healthy bacteria in our gut digests them, mm -hmm. or creates gases in the process. Okay. So this is so important. Okay. So it's just something that's going to happen with kids if they're upset and they're crying or they're crying. Okay, there's a problem. But in general, a normal amount of gas production is normal for all babies and all adults. Okay. But it shouldn't be a problem unless you find that they're really uh, okay. struggling. Can Can you guess the second uh, misconception? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the second misconception, I'm sure you remember the third. Yeah, okay. The second misconception is that we continue to offer foods to babies that are pureed. Ah, yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that are pureed for a very long time. Yes. And we also do this out of love. We think that. Lehien, bukra bitalamo to eat thicker textures. We can be half on each other as I can show us. Absolutely. Really so they are afraid and choking happens and we should be very careful. And as a parent, we absolutely have the responsibility to know what can cause choking okay. and what to do in case they choke. And I always recommend every new mom or dad or helper, nanny, Sita, yeah. grab everyone to learn exactly, to learn exactly how to handle it. I know it might happen. So it's our responsibility to learn what to do in case choking occurs and not to give something that can cause choking, but what can cause choking. The esophagus is very small. Mm -hmm. So everything that you can give a baby that is thick can cause choking, especially if it's hard. Okay. So the idea is you need to, 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 to test it with your fingers. So anything that your fingers can mush, generally the baby's gums can mush. Okay. So like a banana. If you gave yeah. it like pork mash, is appropriate. Uh, an apple is not. Is not. Okay. Yeah. But at the same time, exactly. <laughs> so you're eating it or popcorn, popcorn or sure. something hard. So, so can you give examples of things that are safe to give in terms of uh, solid. food that's not solid? Yeah. It's not pure. Absolutely. So generally, most of the foods that are cooked to properly to start mm -hmm. with uh, are cooked properly that can be fork mashed are appropriate. Okay. And the, if you're introducing a stew, if you're introducing most kinds of vegetables, okay. fruits, 
generally, if you're introducing them, like a banana, you can fork mash it, you don't have to cook it. A mango, you can fork mash it, you don't have to cook it. Yeah. Uh, but for example, an apple, you'd have to cook in order to offer. But generally other things, anything that can be cooked to an appropriate texture that is safe is perfectly fine. So the banana we give them is like that, like it's a little peel and it's a little I would mush it. Mush it. Yes, in the fork. And put it in the So isn't that and equivalent to creating food? In the beginning, at the six, six months exactly, I still wouldn't give, like, there's a puree that is totally soft. And okay. That's a great question. There's a fork mashed texture. Okay. And then you have a regular texture so that you can give. The shadow. There's three different kinds of ways to offer the food. Exactly. Okay. And some people, and now there's baby led weaning and there's everything behind baby led weaning. And baby led weaning is, is, is great, but it's sometimes misunderstood. Mm -hmm. People misunderstand baby led weaning to think that everything needs to be given uh, hard in their hand. But at the same time, Tamayo, eating is a skill. Yani, know, kids, don't we want them to learn how to eat uh, lentil soup? Don't we want them to learn how to eat things off of a spoon? There's no one, there isn't an adult that eats everything by their hands. So both are skills that they yeah. need to to learn. Actually. So what I would say is, whether you choose baby led weaning or the traditional way. Or both together. Or both together, which I would highly recommend and totally makes sense. Just make sure that at the nine months mark, we are transitioning from purees. And absolutely okay. after nine months, we need to be at fork mashed okay. or a little bit thicker. Because okay. between nine months and 10 months, there is this time period, which if babies don't practice eating Thicker okay. textures, they lose the ability. Okay. It's their natural window of opportunity. Okay. So this is what it is. For Anna, for me, learn how to eat things that are safe. Okay. And here, مثلا, at nine months, we usually say like an avocado mm -hmm. or avocado that is soft, mm -hmm. that can be mushed in your finger, mm -hmm. is a finger food that you can offer. Okay. A carrot that is cut long mm -hmm. and is steamed, for example, you can put it in front of the baby. And they're not gonna, you're not going to fork mash it, but at the same time, it's still soft. Okay, Does this so, make sense? So I did, you're saying around seven months, fiat and yeah. masalan? In reality, even at six months, you can cut it long. And if it's soft enough for your finger, mm -hmm. it's soft enough for the gums. Some moms love to hear this and they're like, yes, 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 I'll do it. And other ones will totally freak out. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and both are fine. It's not this or that. Mm -hmm. You can give both in whatever you're comfortable with and advance. Okay. Uh, so that's my opinion on uh, okay. baby led weaning or um, okay. period. So I would definitely say that. Uh, so would you introduce anything besides uh, fruits and vegetables? That, I, mean, I see yes. people, they give us oats or cereal. I don't know. That is a great, 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 great question. So two things that we need to know. Uh, one is starting six months, mm -hmm. which I'm going to tell you hello, about uh, the, the meaning mistake number three, mm -hmm. is that we limit kids in a lot of ways in mm -hmm. what they can eat because we're afraid. So we a lot of people don't give eggs until one year. Masala. They don't give fish until one year. Mm -hmm. They don't give nuts until one year. But I nuts need to be crushed properly. For sure. And this is a mistake because they think it's going to cause allergies. But the new recommendation says that it's actually probably uh, better to introduce them from six months than to wait until after one year. So if you're just afraid and you're avoiding, you're afraid you don't give, a lot of people don't give meat, a lot of people don't give chicken, a lot of people, avoiding giving these things is a huge mistake that we, we do with weaning. Okay. One, because that way the baby is not getting the nutrition that they Masoud. need. And two, because there's no way the baby, or it's very hard for the baby to like these things when they are one year old if they have not tried it between six months to one year. Okay. Because the most important concept in baby feeding is a concept of exposure. Okay. The more exposed they are, the more likely they are to eat it. Okay. So, so, so this is a great question. So yes, you can give, you should be giving uh, meat, chicken, so fish. So mafrume, for bazella and Yes. Uh, fish, for example, you can cook it in the oven or you can cook it on the pan with grain so it can be أنا ما بيكل سمك. ما بيفوت عليك. Okay, fair enough. لا لا. جوزي قال لازم نطعم سمك. It's very healthy. It's important to give it once or twice a week. Yeah. على فكرة هنا they don't. أنا بحبيه. They it doesn't have to be a grilled fish by the way. يعني. شو بيقول هو أصلا. Exactly. So it's almost a lot to give you more examples. So you said eggs and veggies, eggs, oats, along with something else. Any أنت فكرة في يعني grain plus protein plus vegetable plus fat okay you can combine it as you wish it could be lebanese uh, jordanian uh, japanese it, whatever it okay. doesn't matter as long as we are giving them these things 
ومش وي ار جست جيفينج ذيم ذا سيم يو نو اول ذا بيبي فود ريسيبي بوكس ار اولويز لايك بوتيتو اند يا ذا يوجوال من هيك اعلام اكزاكتلي سو هول الكومبينيشنز اوفر تايم ذي دونت الاو ذا تشايلد تو اكسبلور اند اند سو ذا ثيرد مستيك هي انه نوت تو ليميت اور سيلف اند تو جيف these things that a lot of people say are not uh... absolutely okay absolutely we get afraid and again we do it out of love mm-hmm. so our what do moms think think mom th- mom <laughs> moms think that i love them therefore i'll offer them okay. when they're one year old because why be at risk but there is a risk when we don't offer them and okay. we are putting them at risk Okay. of vitamin deficiencies okay. and also the fact that they might not accept it and tamaira i'm sure i let you see uh and i'm sure you hear it maybe from your friends you know 50% of kids today mm-hmm. are picky eaters yeah for sure everyone's like my, my brothers are 18 and 17 years old and they're picky Masalan. eaters like this day and <laughs> uh, so you get to hear that all the time from people they tell you i have a picky eater. and the reason you have a picky eater is because most of the time we started off um, okay the wrong way okay so that's uh, um i have one question mm. uh, because this is something that i wonder about so i think and it's taken for granted somehow how do you allergy test with all these things that are that you're introducing new to this child so you give them one by one and then check and then you can add on to it or how do you usually do it absolutely so I this, this is important this is for a new very... mom you're clueless so mom not if you know very very important question and with this question there are many schools of thought so okay. you're not going to find very very similar answers mm-hmm. through all the health associations but generally if you give a food we're supposed to give it for 2 to 3 days let's say okay. to make sure that there are no allergy signs so what are allergy so signs so multiple times yes okay uh, and why in a row mm-hmm. in a row and if you introduce let's say uh, carrots today and then peas tomorrow and then something else that is exactly ma hatarfe the and you're going to be like why did they get bothered was it carrot or what? and then you stop them both and you go in full panic mode okay. so this is why it's important that maybe the first two weeks are very boring when you start solids because yeah. you're just Re- sometimes repeating. repeating the same thing and the, the same in the same day like no, let's say be called martin or you start with one solid you start with one day. okay people some people start with more than one okay. in my experience as a mom uh, i find that it's better to start with one meal Okay. And get better in this this one meal and get confident and then after two weeks I can out. introduce okay. uh, a second meal. So you're starting let's say with uh carrots three days. Carrots three days. There's no reaction to carrots. What are the reactions? The reactions are a rash. Mm-hmm. A reaction is diarrhea or a reaction is constipation and mom's always panic they're like constipation. Con- It's natural for stool to get harder when you start course, solids. Of course it's going to change. Exactly. Uh choking Uh, so that, that would happen on the spot. The rest of the symptoms would show eventually maybe. Great question. So the choking might happen on the spot, of course. Uh, the rash might happen on the spot, but you would be so surprised that all the other stuff can happen later on. Okay. A lot of the allergies sometimes happen 4 to 6 hours or even the next day. Okay. This is why it's important for 3 days. But smush every 3 day, and carrots 3 days and then asparagus 3 days, it can get boring. So what you can do is as soon as you're safe with the carrots, you but can zid. Exactly on the fourth day you can do carrots and something new which is chicken for example okay. you know so and then if that's okay khalas you know carrots are safe chicken is safe uh, so these are the main things that you need to look for in terms of allergies and then if you really genuinely believe it's an allergy like you got a rash definitely talk to your doctor see if uh, perhaps you need a certain medication okay. you might be afraid you might only want to introduce certain things in the clinic but most of the time if it's not a, a, a rash and it's not suffocation mm-hmm. sometimes it's psychological yeah. uh, so sometimes you just have to try it in two or three weeks again okay. and see if they have a negative reaction okay so sometimes mungkin it gets bad bad fatter and and in most allergies it goes away Time. some of okay. them stay for life okay. but many of the allergies they go away so okay. you've got like cow's milk protein allergy mm-hmm. many kids they don't accept cow's milk but then at one year, baby, you, but then yeah, at one okay. year they're fine so if you're just so because i meet a lot of moms who are so worried mm-hmm. that they stop giving all of these things that cause allergies right because they're like i'm worried i'm worried i'm worried but you actually have the responsibility that if it's not a dangerous allergy to introduce it in in a few months interval okay. so that you can make sure that it went away or not how else would you know uh, if it went away or not so these are i, I like to think that introducing solids 
can is easy. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. There are just major guidelines. Be safe. Don't introduce Mahalik. honey. Don't introduce um, fresh cow's milk. Don't introduce salt. Don't introduce these things. But it's relatively uh, simple. You have a question. Um, so yeah, we got a question. So starting, what age can honey be introduced? Bima anna am don't give honey. And can I know why don't give honey also? Is it because non-pasteurized? Mm -hmm. like you're, you're so good with your question. <laughs> so it's uh, hashura, which is nice, actually. Uh, I'm like that too, by the way. It's so, good. The, better, the more I know, the better. And the more likely you are to do the Probably. things that are recommended. So honey is absolutely not allowed before one year. And the reason is not because it's an allergy. And that's why people get confused. They're like, but you said I can give eggs. How come I can't give honey? Because honey naturally, first off, it's not, most of the time not it's pasteurized. not pasteurized. So it has a natural bacteria. Mm -hmm. And this bacteria actually causes, uh, can cause toxicity. And toxicity, it can cause um, it's called it can cause botulinum, okay. which is it can cause death in some cases. Okay. So it's not something to play with. So sometimes I'll hear stuff from moms, let's say that yeah, I took honey when I was a baby and I'm perfectly fine. That's like, my answer. <laughs> exactly. My aunt, you know, if you got away with it, that you know that might not be the case for your babies. Okay. So it's risky and there's no need. No yeah, need. It's okay. not like they can't grow without honey. So I would say one year. Some doctors will say. No, avoid honey for two years okay. or avoid honey maybe for longer. So what's the minimum? One year minimum. One year minimum. And what if it's cooked? Uh, if it's cooked, the thing is you don't want to cook it at home and take that risk of... No, you should it be cooked, but what if it's inside, let's say, a cake? It's a honey cake and the child is eight months old and wants to have honey cake. So very rationally, if it's cooked, theoretically, it should kill the bacteria, but okay. I wouldn't take the risk. You wouldn't. Okay. No. And no, we can not another thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's good to know. I mean, we don't know how to do so it's good to ask. Absolutely. Um, I'm if I have anything else that I want to ask you, is there anything that you feel is important to give, like major guidelines, any quick last tip? I, uh, I would yeah. really say that be, be, be confident. So definitely mm -hmm. do like, you're going to get a lot of pushback when you start solids because your mom's going to say something and maybe Someone, your mother-in-law. Like anything, like anything yeah. you do with your baby. And maybe all your <laughs> friends, you know, no, do this, do this. Do this. So I people feel. love to say so much when it comes down to eating. So and you have to be confident in your choices and for whoever is listening to me, don't just take it for face value. Check, see what you're convinced in. And personally, I had to do a lot, even though I was a dietitian already, but the information wasn't so clear cut so I had to do a lot of my own research okay. and come up with these guidelines and and really feel confident in them uh, so that whenever you do get pushed back you can say no thank you comfortably okay. um, so that would would generally be it for me okay so if we're confident our child would feel that and yes and, and I think it's very important and it's the... a fun thing you know if we're giving babies the food and and we're panicked they're gonna panic. They're yeah. not gonna enjoy this. And if we're over their head, like, did you finish your plate? I made you this. Did you not eat it? Did you? And it's not supposed to be. Okay. Uh, it's not supposed to be the case. Anna, honestly, I'm really looking forward to yeah. to this uh, time. Damon can tell me, I mean, I can't wait. Oh, Tommy, كذا شغلة وشوف his reaction, شوف كيف حياة. It's very. It's sort of like, yeah. no, it's discovering something new, you know. So I feel it's gonna be a fun time, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it is, especially with you. You're gonna be like researching stuff all the time. <laughs> Fun stuff. Getting exotic fruits, <laughs> that I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna be an amazing. Well, let me know if you have any more questions. Thank you so much. I think uh, everything was very helpful. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you for your amazing question. Well, thanks, uh, Mom's Word, for this opportunity.